Hello everybody, this is John, and I want to welcome you to another painting video. This video is going to be a little bit uh, different because I have no idea what I'm painting. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I had a great weekend. My wife and I did a lot of errands. Um, it was cold out on Saturday, but it was gorgeous today, Sunday. Um, but my mind is going all over the place, so I really couldn't come up with a concrete idea what I wanted to paint. So when that happens, I just take... Uh, a tip from Stuart Davies, who's a brilliant artist on YouTube. Uh, look up his um, his YouTube channel, Stuart Davies. He's really, he's an English man. He lives in, I believe, the south of France. And uh, this isn't exactly what he does, but he does a lot of spontaneity with his oil paintings. And that's exactly what this is. I'm just putting in color, the same color, which is a combination of uh, blue-black and a little bit of sap green, a little bit of alizarin crimson, and uh, a little bit of burnt umber. And it's just all real light. And I'm just using just a little bit of the walnut, uh, walnut elk in medium. And I'm just laying in kind of ideas. And here's a perfect example. You saw behind with this little shack that I'm making now that I'm painting. Behind it was a mountain, little hill, whatever. I decided, you know, I'm just going to go and forget the hill. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of a shack or something like that and now i'm putting in uh background trees and foliage and stuff like that and i'm using the same color okay i'm not using any other color and you can use any color you want that's just kind of what i thought looked you know was good for me that's what it was on my brush when i mixed it up and thought oh wow this looks kind of good and the beauty of oil painting is because it's an opaque medium it doesn't matter you know to me this is a very appealing color it's kind of a soft easy on the eyes type of color and it's just it's perfect for me and here i'm just putting in the water i got a little mound over there still not sure what i'm going to do with that area that whole middle area in the top half of the painting is completely empty i'm no clue what i'm doing now i'm going to put in a sky and i'm using french ultramarine blue a little bit of alizarin crimson and then i'm using titanium white and you can see how kind of grayish and dark that is. And it's, um, Williamsburg is the uh, make of the French ultramarine I'm using. And um, Williamsburg is expensive. However, it is a really richly pigmented and very good paint. And um, I'm starting to kind of use up some of my old stuff that I'm not going to be using anymore, which is still artist quality. I'm just moving up into different paint. So as I'm running out of my Lucas um, 1862 and Rembrandt, I'm going more into the Williamsburg for the moment. Okay, so I just painted a sky over everything that I did, um, as far as the trees and the foliage and stuff. And that's fine, because you can still see little remnants of it back there. And, you know, when you sketch it out like I did, you know, you're going to know what's there. You're going to remember it, and like every other artist does, you're going to alter it as you go. So right now, as you can see, I'm just kind of fine-tuning. I just put a very rough outline, almost like a stick figure of a um, barn, I guess. And um, what's nice about um, painting, doesn't matter what medium it is, you don't need to have your sketch precise. You can pretty much have it as raw as you want and then tighten it up as you go. There's an artist, I met a, um, I've never met a famous artist except once, and um, it's Tom Lynch, watercolorist, famous watercolorist, and I met him at a show, my goodness, 10 years ago, and one of the things he told me is you always start out loose and then tighten it as you go to however you want, and that's kind of what I like to do, and I've kind of used that um, words of wisdom, and trust me, I am serious when I say wisdom. Um, pretty much in everything I paint now. I'll start out with very loose strokes, a very loose idea, and I'll tighten it as I go. And that's the beauty of painting, is as you go into the painting, you know, it's like your mind and your artistic soul, I guess, kind of takes over. And it's really a cool thing. So I started out not knowing what I was doing, and I just laid in some shapes and some color. Then I decided, hey, I'm going to have a little barn over here. Now, all of a sudden, a painting, a scene, 
is formulating in my head without even trying. It just happened, and that's awesome. And that happens to anybody that paints. You know, if you allow it to happen, it will happen. And this painting, again, I think, what the heck? I believe it was right around 28 minutes um, actual paint time, and then I'm speeding it up double like I always do to make it a little more easily digested on YouTube. And that way you don't have to listen to my voice for 27 minutes. You only have to listen to my voice for 12 to 14 minutes. You're welcome, by the way. Okay, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with my trees. So I'm using a two-inch brush that I got for like $3 at Ace Hardware. And I don't know how many paintings I've used that brush with. Again, this is a little thing I um, picked up from Bob Davies. I mean, yeah, Stuart Davies, I'm sorry. Bob Davies actually is another artist, an English artist, and uh, he's also very good. But Stuart Davies uses a two-inch brush, um, not a... Bob Ross 2-inch, just an everyday hardware store cheap 2-inch bristle brush. And he does most of his work with it. He does he has other brushes too, but he does most of his work with it. And I learned how to make pine trees and stuff with it. But if you notice, I'm varying the color. I'm going more greens on the outsides and a little more into like the uh, Payne's Gray in the middle and then a little bit of a Linzer and Crimson and all of it just to get a real nice, subtle variety. If you haven't guessed by now, I'm really working on the earth tones to try to kind of bring that kind out. It's going to be a very soft earth tone type of uh, painting when it's uh, finished. And right about now is kind of when I knew what it was going to end up being. And I knew I didn't want anything that was really bright um, in this particular painting. It's not a dreary painting by no stretch, but it's a little subdued in color. It's a little more, like I said, earthy as far as, you know, the um, feel to it, I want to say. And here I'm just fiddling a little bit with my barn. I want it to, um, you know, fine-tune it. It's not going to be a perfect architectural structure. You know, it's, it's an impressionistic oil painting. You know, it doesn't need to be. As a matter of fact, if it looked architecturally perfect, it wouldn't fit in the painting. However, you can see that it is a lot tighter and looks a lot better than the sketch did, which is basically a few lines of whatever. Okay, in the um, manner of, I don't even know how I'm going to say this, but what I'm trying to do is keep a certain color harmony and use very few colors in order to keep the color harmony in this painting. So as you can tell by this foreground, it's the same colors as those trees and that mid-ground right at the top of the far riverbank. And that's by design. One of the things that you want to do, especially in landscapes, but probably all paintings, is utilize your color palette in multiple areas of the painting. And that'll unify the painting with a nice... It's a nice ease to the eye for um, color and it just it's aesthetically pleasing to the eye we may not even consciously think about it but as we look at a painting that it's like that it really does come out really nice okay now here i'm doing the actual underpainting of the uh, water okay what was on there was just basically a sketch with paint of where i wanted the water to be and i was going to have it not real rough, but not, you know, placid, okay? It was going to have a little bit of movement to it, but not like rapids or anything. And one of the things you can tell, you can even see on the right, I'm using a lot of the browns and a lot of the greens and some of the crimson in the water as well, for obvious reasons. Water reflects its surroundings, and its surroundings is umbers and alizarin crimson, a little bit of Payne's gray, and, you know, a subdued, a little darker green. Now, here I want to get the feel of water, okay? And this is what I'm doing with the brush. Okay, I'm getting a little feel of the water with just straight titanium white that, as you notice, I'm blending into the blue. And now I'm going to take a little bit more of the green and a little bit of blue, and I'm just going to flick that in here and there and just mix it to get a nice little feel to it. And now I'm going to get the movement. And like I said, I'm not going to have a movement of rapids or anything like that. 
but just glistening and so you can see that it's not just a, a stagnant pool. You know, it does have a little bit of movement to it. And I'm not going to leave those hard edges on any of those things. I'm going to take a fan brush and gently blend those out where you can still see the movement, but all the little harsh edges to it are going to be gone. And there it goes. You see how it just moves the paint and, you know, it smooths out the rough edges so you're just left with the movement? And it's got a real pretty soft feel to it. And you can see the water's moving, but it, like I said, it's not rapids moving. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do, I believe, is the foreground grass, which is not going to be this bright green or anything like that. It's going to be a mixture of everything that we've used plus a little bit of yellow. Oh, actually, I'm doing the reeds first. I'm sorry. I've been a couple hours since I did the video. So I'm doing the reeds, and this is the same color, okay, as the trees that are on the left, except I added a little bit more of the, um, of the sap green as opposed to the umber. And here's where the yellow is getting put in it. And I'm mix, I mix the yellow with the umber and the alizarin, and then I'm mixing it the way I'm tapping it into. You see the way I'm holding the brush? And the way you tap it like that, that's actually mixing it with the wet color underneath it. So it's brighter than the reeds that are on the riverbank, but it's not so bright where it just messes up the whole feel of the painting. You know, it's just a little lighter. Let's say that. It's not bright. Now, this glop I did right there, I despise completely, and I will change. And one of the beauties of oil painting, you will see shortly, as I fix that little blob of yellow right there. Okay, right now I'm using straight alizarin crimson with the dirty brush. So it's got a lot of stuff mixed in. And then I'm adding titanium white to it to get the flowers, the nice little bright, but not, I should say lighter, not bright just so they stand out pretty good. And then I got a palette knife. I'm getting rid of the gloppy yellow I did. And I'm gonna go and put some more of the alizarin and white in there. It's got enough yellow, I thought. So I wanted to have a nice feel to it. And then if I'm not mistaken, that got the mid-ground grass, and that's about it for this painting. You know, like I said before, you don't need 50 years of school, God-given abilities in, from the womb, and special invite from the ghost of Da Vinci in order to paint well and have fun. You really just need to do a little bit of practice. You need to... Watch where you buy your materials and on sale so, you know, you get the sales so you can get the best materials possible for the least amount of money. You know, you try to get, it, you know, the best paint and stuff you can, but always go for the sales. And a desire. And you can learn to oil paint and make nice paintings that you can be proud of. Like I said, this whole thing from start to finish was under half an hour. Now, yes, I've been painting for a long time, so for me... It's going to be quicker than it is for somebody else. But the fact of the matter is, I started at one point like everybody else and then just progressed by doing it and doing it. So what takes me a half an hour might take you an hour and a half and it won't look as good to start with. Okay, mine were really bad to start with. If you keep with it in a matter of months, not years, not decades, months, you can really produce some really pretty nice looking paintings that you can be proud of. So I hope you give it a try. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment. If you like my videos and you want to see more, I try to upload. I've been pretty consistent with every Sunday evening. Um, hit that subscribe button and that little bell to uh, get notified every time I upload a video. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your weekend and a safe work week. Take care.